Welcome back to another one of my CV2 tutorials. So, I know it's been a while. Actually, it's been over a year since I've been able to say that sentence. But, uh, I want I, I just want to say I'm back. I'm going to be making more CV2 tutorials. I'll be more active in the community now. Now that I'm back, I got more time. More time on my hands and I can actually put more effort into my content and everything I want to do in Rec Room. So right off the bat you can see quality improved. Back when I made my first few tutorials I was only on, a, on Quest. So I was recording on Quest. The first few videos were one by one. They were in a square. They weren't perfect. But uh, I've, I've, seen, I've seen all the positive feedback from all of you. And I'm really happy that my... my uh, my tutorials have helped you, that um, everything went well. I'm very happy and I'm very lucky to have you know, such a positive community and people that actually want to see more of my content. And one of my plans is to redo all my previous tutorials because back when I did those, they were still in beta. CV2 was still in beta, everything was different. There weren't as many circuits. I wasn't able to go through that much for beginners. But it's changed now. CV2 is not fully released. More chips are coming in every update. We got a lot of things we can now go through. And yeah. So today is that day. So to start off with, I've spawned in a few variables and we're gonna go through all of them and I'll be telling you what all the different what all the, all the different colors mean, where you'd use them, and just a general use purpose for variables. So, quick thing, variables are something you cannot escape. These are a prime and you need them in almost every CV2 project. Not everyone, everything, but the majority of use cases for circuitry require variables to store some sort of value. Now, as you can see, I've spawned in quite a few. Uh, the reason I've spawned these particular ones in is because I want to go through all the colors, tell you what all these do, and show you a few differences and a few more variables because these are not all the variables that we currently have in the game. There's a lot more. And I also made sure that my room is in beta mode so I can show you the latest circuits that are still yet to release in the future. So we're going to start from the top and we're going to go all the way to the bottom. So on the top here we have a string variable. The string variable is always going to be purple. Now what is a string variable? A string variable basically stores text. Anything that is in this circuit, so with that color, means text. It can be a number, it can be just normal text or like a whole sentence. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is everything that is in a string variable is considered text and nothing else. Now, next time I'm also going to show you that you can use string as a general data type, which means you can convert string to numbers and the other way around. So, again, string variable so stores string, which is short for text. Now, variables are here to store data, so it can be used later. A lot of circuitry pass out data, which means it's only available when you're doing something with it at that given time, but variables make it available so you can store that information for a longer period of time. Next up, we have a float variable. A float variable stores numbers. Now, not just any number, but it also stores precise numbers. So instead of only having 1, 2, 3, and 4, for example, you could have things like 1.1, 1 1.0001, very specific numbers. Um, that help with anything math related, for example. Next, we have a bool variable. A bool variable can only store two values. The value can either be true or false. The best example for a bool variable is if you're asking someone a yes or no question. For example, I could ask someone in this room if this platform I'm standing on currently is green. The person would respond yes, and in bool terms, so boolean, it will be true. You can see over here it currently says false. So if I ask if the sky is green, that's a no, which means it will be false. But true is basically yes. 
So bool booleans are used for logic. Things like, is the current player that you've selected a member of a specific role you've given them? In my case, since I don't have any roles, and I'd ask the circuitry if I have the role called test, for example, the boolean would return false, because it's not true. Next, we have an int variable. An int variable also stores numbers, such as the float variable, but the only difference is the int variable only stores whole numbers. So just 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Next, we have, for in, in my case, a player vari variable. Now, the reason why I'm saying in my case is that many variables in the game and, it, and many other circuitries have a yellow pin, which means that the player variable and things like the AI variable, combatant variable, things like that, all have yellow pins. Now, the reason why they have yellow pins is because they're game specific. Things like these, so string, float, to bool, and int, have their specific colors because these are also used in real life pretty much. We count with with integers in coding terms or float. We have com we have conversations in which we ask questions. Yes or no questions, for example. There you go. We could we could say it's a Boolean. Now obviously no one says that, but yeah. And everything we speak, write, and type would be considered a string. So these are not just game specific, these are pretty much global. In real life, in other coding languages, in rec room, and any other game pretty much. And a player variable, since all of this is a rec room object, is defined with a yellow yellow um, color. The last one, you have a color variable. As you can see, this one also has its own color. Now, this one is dark blue, so make sure not to mix it up with a float variable. The color variable is pretty much self-explanatory. It stores color. So this green color, for example, could be stored in here. Now, in my case, it comes with the red, uh, the red color here, but uh, this doesn't actually mean anything. And let me tell you why. String variables are here to store, of course, but we have to tell it what and when to store variables. This is not going to store everything it gets all the time and you know, it, it won't keep rewriting a different variable unless we set it like that. So, now we go on to the next pin, which is this orange, a much thicker pin. This pin is pretty much on almost every circuitry, and it means execution. We pretty much use this pin to start a circuit. So, in, in the case of variables, we input on the left what we want to store, and we ex execute the chip as soon as we want to store that variable. And this is another thing you have to keep in mind. Left side of, of any circuit means input, meaning that we give it information. And on the right side of any circuitry means output, which that means that it will give us information that we can use later on. So I, in this case, will give you an example on how to store a value now. Now, keep in mind, if you sometimes want to check what's in a current currently given variable, all you have got to do is hover over one of these output pins with your connect tool. As you can see, I'm hovering over the right pin on my bool variable and it says false, because currently in this variable, the boolean false is stored. So we'll make it that we store the boolean true in this variable instead. And there's many ways to do it, but in my case, I'm just going to go simple and show you the example with a button. So what I'm going to do real quick is put all these variables aside, because we don't need those at the moment. And let's focus on the bool variable for this example. Everything else there works the same. So we are going to go over to a circuit components, grab a button, and there you go. We have a CV2 button now. Now right off the bat, you can see that the circuitry for the button only has pins on the right side, meaning that the button, the preset button, of course, because we are allowed to edit circuitries with this symbol, which means circuit board, we're getting that, we're gonna get into that some other time. Our button will output information. So let's go through it really quickly. You can pretty much see what it does right off the bat because it's self explanatory. So pressed will activate a execution chip, meaning that when I press the button, 
this will output a signal. Now right below it, we see a pin called player, meaning that when I press the button, this pin right here will output me. So the player who pressed the button. Same thing for release. So if I hold down the button for, for a little bit and I release it, when I release it, that's when these two get activated and output the, that it's released and who released it. Now here, you see this right here, it says it's pressed. Now, if you take a look at the bool variable here, see the color here and the color here, this means this is a boolean. Now the is pressed boolean changes if the button is currently pressed. So let me show you real quick. As you can see, the boolean is currently false because the button is not being pressed. But when I hold it, as you can see, the boolean turns true because the button is indeed currently pressed. I let it go. Now it's false again. So we're going to wire up the pressed execution to our boolean variable. For now, we still have the boolean false stored in, it, stored in there. We press the button. As you can see, everything lights up, meaning that it did in fact send out a signal and it's working. Now we hover over here and there you go. The variable now stores true. And there you go. This is a very brief, short, and simple explanation of variables, which you will be using throughout your circuit journey. I hope I'll see you in my next tutorial, and I hope these ones, which I'm making again, will help you a little bit more and have more information that, so they'll teach you a bit more about circuits because I do know that some of the explanations in my previous tutorials might have been either incomplete or a little bit confusing. So if I was going too fast, if I was explaining it a bit too complicated, please make sure to tell me that in the comments. If you enjoyed my tutorials and the previous ones, make sure to like and subscribe and I hope I'll see you in the next one.